Okay, students, let's start with the past papers of O levels in IGCSE physics of the chapter of heat capacity. These are more of MCQs. Okay, let's see this question. A metal disc is heated to 600 degrees centigrade and then lowered into a beaker of water. What happens to the mass of the metal disc and to the mass of the water in the beaker? Okay, so let's say this is your metal disc. Something like this. And this is lowered into a beaker. This is lowered into a beaker like this. Let's say this is your beaker and metal disc is lowered into the beaker. Let's say something along these lines. Metal disc is inside the beaker. What will happen to the mass of metal disc? It will remain unchanged. So A and B will get cancelled out. What will happen to the mass of water in the beaker? Since the metal disc is at 600 degrees centigrade, it will cause some of the water molecules here to convert into gas and escape. It will cause some of the water molecules to convert into gas and escape from the surface. C is your answer. Let's further move ahead. Which statement about the thermal expansion of solids, liquid and gases is correct? Liquids do not expand, no. Liquid expands more than gases, no. Liquid expands more than solids but less than gases, C is your answer. Let's further move ahead. A person cannot open a glass jar which has a metal lid. Okay. After the lid is held under hot water. Okay. For a few seconds, the jar opens easily. Okay. What is the explanation for this? Because if the lid is held under hot water, what do you think will happen? The solid will expand. The jar, uh, the gas jar, con the glass jar contracts. No. The glass jar expands, no. The metal lid contracts, no. The metal lid expands. D is your answer. Let's further move ahead. A strip is made from two metals, okay, joined together. The diagram shows the strip at room temperatures and after it is being cooled. So it is showing the strips at room temperature and after they are being cooled. The change in shape occurs because brass contacts more than inward, yes. I guess this is correct because can you see brass is on the inward side any metal that is on the inward side will always contract more compared to the metal on the outward side A is your answer let's move ahead a metal lid fits tightly on a glass jar okay which process makes it makes it easier to remove the lid from the jar okay which process will make the process of removing the metal lid from the glass jar easier you can warm the lid D is your answer. Simple. Yeah, I think that is the only correct answer. Cool the lid cannot be the answer. Put the jar, no. Warm the jar, no. D is your answer. A metal rod is heated. This will cause the volume of the metal rod to increase. And we have studied density is inversely proportional to volume. If volume increases, density should decrease. Let's see. Let's search for an option like that. C and D can't be my options. Volume increases and density decreases. B is my option. Let's further move ahead. Fillings in teeth should be made from a material which does not expand when heated. No. Expand by the same amount as the tooth expands when heated. Correct. Let's further move ahead. For the same temperature rise and the same original volume, which of three states of matter expands the most? Which will expand the most? Gas. Which expands the least? Solid. Any answers like that? A is your answer. This was a pretty easy question. A piece of iron of mass M is placed in a mixture of ice and water. Its temperature decreases from theta 1 to theta 2. Okay. How much thermal energy is lost by the piece of iron? Okay. So are we given the specific heat capacity? No. Do you remember this formula? Energy supplied used to be equal to MC delta theta. So MC, that is the specific heat capacity into delta theta A is your answer. C can't be my option because here you can see we are not multiplying specific heat capacity. Instead, we are multiplying heat capacity. There is a major difference between heat capacity and specific heat capacity. A specific heat capacity is per unit mass and heat capacity for is for the entire object. So there is a difference between heat capacity and specific heat capacity. Yeah, luckily we have a question here. 
what is the heat capacity of a body the amount of thermal energy that no the amount of thermal energy requires to raise the temperature of the body by 1 degree centigrade this is heat capacity this is your correct option and here a specific heat capacity definition is also written the amount of thermal energy required to raise the temperature of 1 kg object by 1 degree centigrade this is the definition of a specific heat capacity can you see in a specific heat capacity we are also including masses such as 1 kg let's further move ahead less thermal energy is raised to is needed to raise the temperature of 1 kg of copper by 1 degree centigrade then it is needed to raise the temperature of water of 1 kg by 1 degree centigrade okay so less amount of heat is basically needed to raise 1 kg of copper by 1 degree centigrade compared to water 1 kg raising it by 1 degree centigrade. So what does this indirectly mean? This indirectly means that a specific heat capacity of copper is less than the specific heat capacity of water. Let's see if we have an option like that. Copper has a high melting point. No, copper has a low specific heat capacity. Yes, correct. Let's further move ahead. What is the unit of heat capacity? Always remember heat capacity is energy divided by change in temperature. What is energy ka unit? Joules divided by temperature that is degree centigrade. So C is your answer. Let's further move ahead. The temperature of a body increases by 1 degree centigrade. Which quantity also increases? Heat capacity? No. In specific heat capacity? No. In specific latent heat? No. Internal energy, yes. Why? Because internal energy is a combination of potential energy and kinetic energy. If temperature increases, internal energy will increase because kinetic energy and potential energy both increase. Let's further move ahead. The specific uh, specific heat capacity of lead is this. Okay, so small c is this. Lead of mass 0 0.5 kg, m is this, is heated from 10 degrees centigrade to 35 degrees centigrade. Calculate the amount of thermal energy. Again, Q, that is the thermal energy, is equal to mc delta theta. What is m here? 0 0.5. What is c here? 130. What is delta theta? 10 to 35, that is 25. Is there any answer like that? A is your answer. Let's further move ahead. Temperature of a 50 gram mass of a metal is raised by 40 degrees centigrade. The specific heat capacity of metal is 0 0.4. How much thermal energy is supplied? Q is equal to mc delta theta. What is your m? 50. What is your c? 0 0.4. What is your delta theta? 40. Let's calculate the answer. 50 into 0.4 into 40. This comes out to be 800 joules as your answer. D is your answer. Let's further move ahead. Heat capacity of an object of mass 2 kg is C. Okay, so heat capacity of an object of mass 2 kg is C. The energy supplied to the object will be C. Always remember Q is equal to capital C into delta T. Q has two formulas. Q is equal to MC delta T and Q is equal to capital C into delta T. This is your heat capacity. And the smaller C wala formula is your specific heat capacity. Okay. So what can be your answer here? B can be your answer here. The energy needed to increase the temperature of unit mass by change in temperature is C into change in T. Let's further move ahead. An insulated uh, beaker contains 300 grams of water initially at 30 degrees centigrade. So the initial temperature is this. Water at 100 degree centigrade. Okay, this is an other type of water. Water at 100 degree centigrade is added until the mixture reaches 50 degree centigrade. The final temperature is this. Okay. The specific heat capacity of water is this. So we can say heat gained. Heat gained by. Heat gained by. Water in beaker is equal to what heat lost by water at 100 degrees centigrade okay 
So heat gained by beaker will be will be what? The mass is 300 grams. The specific heat capacity is 4.2. The change in temperature is what? From 30 degrees centigrade, you are going to 50 degrees centigrade. So 50 minus 30, okay. For the heat loss by water, what is your mass that you have added? We don't know. What is your specific heat capacity? 4.2. What was your initial temperature? 100. What is your final temperature? 50. Okay. So 4.2, 4.2 gets cancelled out. 300 into 50 minus 30 is 20 divided by 50. This gives you an answer for the mass. That is 120 grams. B is your answer. Thermal energy of 12,000 joules is supplied to a 2 kg mass of copper. The specific heat capacity of copper is this. What is the rise in temperature? So Q is equals to mc delta theta. What is Q? 12,000. What is your mass? 2. What is your specific heat capacity? 400. Can you calculate the change in temperature? Yes. 12,000 divided by 800. I guess the answer will be... 15 degrees centigrade. A is your answer. Let's further move ahead. Different amounts of energies are supplied to copper blocks of different masses. Which block experiences the greatest temperature change? So what we will uh, do? We will take the energy divided by mass. Energy or Q. Q divided by mass gives you your change in temperature okay so for the option a 200 divided by 0.1 gives you a temperature change of 2000 roundabout uh, for part b 200 divided by 0.2 this gives you a temperature change of 1000 for c 600 divided by 0.4 this gives you an answer of 1500 and 400 divided by 0.8. This gives you an answer of 500. Okay, you might notice that the temperatures are quite high. The temperatures are quite high, although we have gotten an answer that is A. But you might notice that the temperatures are quite high because we have done a mistake while writing the equation. I have very simplified this equation. Q over M is equals to C into delta T. All these values, 2000, 1000, 1500, 500, are of C into delta T. But this C doesn't matter. Why? Because this will remain constant for all the blocks. Because all the blocks are made of copper. So this is why I didn't consider C. Let's further move ahead. The diagram shows a room temperature liquid in a beaker. What reduces the rate of liquid loss by evaporation? Okay, so what reduces the rate of evaporation? Blowing air across the top of the beaker? No. Heating the liquid? No. Putting a lid on the beaker? Yes. This for sure reduces the rate of evaporation. Uh, the temperature of the water in four beakers are different and the area of the surface of water are also different. In which beaker is the rate of evaporation the greatest? Okay, so it will be greatest in the highest temperature. A and B gets cancelled out. And it will be greatest, the rate of evaporation will be greatest for a beaker that has the highest surface area. D is your answer. Let's further move ahead. A substance has a melting point of minus 17 degrees centigrade and a boiling point of 117 degrees centigrade. Okay, what will be the states at minus 10 degrees centigrade and 1 1 10 degrees centigrade okay so the best way i find to do these questions is to create a number line let's say at minus 17 degrees centigrade at minus 17 degrees centigrade you are a uh, you, you this is your melting point so before this you are solid okay and then at 1, 1, 7 degree centigrade is your boiling point. So after this, you are a gas. In between these two temperatures, you are a liquid. In between these two temperatures, you are a liquid. Okay. So what are the temperatures that we are given? Minus 10. Okay. So minus 10 will be somewhere here. At minus 10, you will be a liquid. 
at 1 1 10 degree centigrade that is somewhere here you will also be a liquid so is there any option like that c is your answer when a liquid evaporates molecules escape from its surface okay which molecules escape and what happens to the average kinetic energy of the molecules the less energetic molecules escape no the less energetic molecules escape no the more energetic molecules escape and the average kinetic energy decreases c is your answer let's further move ahead a piece of paper torn out of an exercise book is shown and some of the particles at the surface gain so much kinetic energy that they break free and take the energy away with them. This is evaporation. Simple as that. This marks the end of the past papers for the chapter of heat capacity.